if you've been homesteading for any amount of time, or even if you're not a homesteader, chances are you have probably heard about elderberry. It's funny because just a few years ago, most people thought it was some fake herbal remedy that you would just talk about among mom groups and on Facebook crazy groups, you know. But now people are realizing that elderberry truly is an amazing herbal supplement and remedy in your home apothecary and even if you don't have an apothecary, just in your remedy cabinet. So today we are talking about elderberry, how to make elderberry syrup, and why it's important that you have this herbal remedy on hand before you actually need it. So elderberry came on the scene big time in 2009 when a study showed that elderberry had the ability to inhibit the H1N1 virus from attacking and adhering to cells in your body. Now why is that so important? Well in 2009 the United States was in an H1N1 epidemic and so we were trying to find ways, it's, it's much like we are in right now, of course different, but we were trying to find ways to prevent the virus from happening and to cure the virus at the same time. Well, we discovered much what most herbalists already knew, that elderberry had amazing preventative and healing properties. So since then, as elderberry increases in production and in the interwebs, we've discovered that everybody knows about elderberry now. Now that can be kind of bad too because in the past three years at least we've had an elderberry shortage so I would encourage you if you're serious about this herbal preventative that you that you start growing elderberries on your own or you find a reputable source that generally is a good source that's always going to be in stock. Now you can certainly buy elderberry syrup from companies like Abby's Elderberries and um, various different places like Mountain Rose Herbs and other herbalists in your area. But the one thing I constantly hear is that it doesn't work. And that could be the case in some situations, depending on your body and how your body responds to it. But one of the most important things I've discovered is when making your own herbal remedies or when taking someone else's herbal remedy, you have to know exactly what's in it. And so I'm gonna link a blog in the description of this video that talks about the importance in many situations on how to make preparations and how you should always weigh out your herbs and liquids so that you get the same results every time. What I hear consistently in mom groups and blog groups and herbalist groups is that, oh well, I made elderberry last year and it worked very well, but this year it's not working and chances are it's because the ratio from herb to liquid was off and you actually have a less potent remedy. So it's important to always weigh your herbs and I, like I said, I will link all that information in the description below so you can learn more about it. Now, elderberry syrup itself is extremely powerful. I personally make elderberry and astragalus syrup together. It kind of creates this powerhouse supplement and preventative that really works for my family. So we're going to go over that recipe today, but I want to talk to you a little bit about both of these herbs and how they work together. Now, as I mentioned, elderberry had a study, which I'll link below, and it's had various studies, even a new one in 2019 and here in 2020, where we have seen the ability of elderberry and elderflower to inhibit the ability for viruses such as H1N1, influenza, and the common cold from adhering to the cells in your body and replicating. So it's, it's stopping that replication if you can catch it soon enough. It's also why we use it as a preventative. So if you're gonna take elderberry syrup every day, it helps prevent those viruses from ever attaching, ever attaching themselves to the cells in your body. Now, does that mean it's gonna work every single time? Maybe not. It, could it be ineffective because of your herbal remedy and making it differently? Very possible. Could it be ineffective because you forgot to take the syrup one day? Very possible. It could be ineffective because your immune system might already be very weak. Maybe you have an unhealthy immune system, which we went over in the video before this, which I'll also link in the description of this video. There's a few various differences um, and situations that you could run into, but for the most part, elderberry is extremely efficient in preventing viruses 
uh, in your body. And so that's why we take elderberry number one. The other reason we take elderberry is because it has recently, even here in 2020, been proven to lessen the symptoms of influenza and the common cold. That is really important because it used to be we thought, well, it's just good as a preventative, but now we know, well, actually, it's also good to take even when you have the flu and the common cold. Now, I can tell you personally that I have, years ago when I made elderberry syrup for our community, I made gallons and gallons and gallons every year. Um, I actually knew people who tested positive for the flu who took the remedy and the flu was gone in 24 to 48 hours. Now that's not to say that's gonna happen for everyone. Um, these people obviously already had very healthy immune systems and so that elderberry helps support their immune system and stop the replication of that virus and get rid of the symptoms that they were having. But it might not work that way for everyone, but it certainly has been proven to have that ability. Now, the next reason we use elderberry and astragalus together, so this is actually the first reason we use them together. Uh, astragalus is a powerhouse immune stimulating herb. So just taking elderberry alone is fine. It's a great preventative and it's great at lessening the symptoms and the duration of the flu, the common cold, things like that. But what happens if you're going out? You're going out and you're around a lot of people and you really need that extra stimulation in your immune system, especially with a new virus. We add astragalus for that reason. Astragalus actually has immune stimulating properties and so it puts your immune system on guard before it ever needs to be on guard. And the way the immune system works is that your immune system is, is kind of working in various different ways. It gets rid of toxins and viruses and bacteria and funguses. And then when an antigen comes, which is a, in this case a virus, then it becomes really on guard and starts trying to fight those antigens away. What if our immune system was already on guard and ready to fight that away before we ever needed it to? That's kind of where astragalus steps in. Astragalus has also been proven to fight those symptoms and really not boost your immune system, and you'll, you'll understand why I'm not saying boost your immune system if you watched the video before this, but it very much supports your immune system so that your immune system isn't having to work so hard. Astragalus kind of steps in and fills those gaps and it creates this beautiful harmony and balance in your body. Now, we make this remedy together. You can also add uh, rose hips, which are great in vitamin C. You can add echinacea. There's all kinds of things you could add, but those are the two herbs that we use consistently in our elderberry syrup. All right, so let's get started with the recipe and then we will end this video. So you're gonna start by sourcing really good elderberries and I will link some sources below that you can find those elderberries. I will also link a source below where you can buy elderberry syrup from a place that I trust if you don't wanna make it yourself, but it's so easy to make yourself and it's very cost effective when you see how much syrup you can actually get. Now, I'm gonna give you the recipe from my blog and out of my book called The Homesteader's Herbal Companion. This just makes a very small amount. So if you are looking for a more bulk amount, I will give you that just kind of based on what I do every year. Um, but we're gonna go over the specifics first. So I start with 100 grams of dried black elderberries. I add 20 grams of dried astragalus root, 15 grams of dried ginger root, eight grams of dried clove, I use the whole cloves, and then a quart of distilled water, or you can use previously boiled water. You're gonna boil that together for 20 minutes. Now you don't have to have a rolling boil for 20 minutes, but definitely bring it to a boil and try to keep a high, high simmer because elderberries have toxins in them and they have to be released through the duration of a boiling temperature point or a very high temperature point. So there's a lot of confusion about elderberries and the cyanide possibility of cyanide poisoning. Um, no, elderberries don't have uh, the cyanide release when they dehydrate because dehydration doesn't happen at a high enough temperature. You also shouldn't make your elderberry syrup in an instant pot unless you're simmering it for 20 minutes after you use it in the instant pot or the instant pot duration is more than 10 minutes long. Um, elderberries release the toxic cyanide that's in them. Each person is different, but it's most studies have been proven that the cyanide doesn't reach tolerable levels until it's been boiled uh, for at least 10 minutes. Uh, my family personally still sees the cyanide toxicity in an upset stomach. Um, 
even after 10 minutes. So we always do the 20 minutes to 30 minutes. I wouldn't go after 30 minutes because at that point you do risk the loss of um, the medicinal benefits. Now you're gonna bring what I just mentioned together in a boil, you're gonna boil at a, or a high simmer for 20 minutes. At that point, you're going to drain off all of your elderberry liquid into another pan or into a bowl and squeeze out as much of that elderberry as you can from the berries and other, the other herbs that you're using. Once you have your liquid ready, you're gonna place that back on your stove top and then you're gonna add one and a half cup, so half cup of organic sugar. We use evaporated cane juice, which is the same thing, but a more natural sugar. You can omit the sugar, but it does have a preserving factor that is, you know, uncomparable to many things. So it also makes it a little bit thicker. So you would just bring it to a simmer and reduce it by about half. You could reduce it by a quarter and be fine as well. Or you could just sugar it up and let it go for a few minutes until it's dissolved and, and be ready with that too. At that point, you're gonna take your syrup off of the heat. You're gonna let it cool down quite a bit, so for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then you're gonna add raw honey. I like to add one cup of raw honey for its health benefits. It's great for respiratory, it's great for the immune system, it's great for the gut. You can omit the raw honey as well, um, but I really enjoy it in our syrup and it gives it a really great flavor. So once you're done, you're gonna jar it up and you're gonna put it in the refrigerator and you're gonna leave it until you're ready to use it. You can take a tablespoon as preventative every day for, if you're an adult, if of 150 pounds. If you're much heavier than that, I would go to two tablespoons a day. For children, uh, about under the age of five and under, I would do a teaspoon a day and then you can go up from there. Again, I'll link all this information below so you can read through it and have it ready. Now, if you wanna make a bulk batch, I have made so many bulk batches that I kind of just eyeball it. I know that contradicts everything I just said, but um, generally there it's the weight isn't much off at all. So when you buy elderberries, they come in normally one pound bags. So I do a one pound bag of elderberry. I do a quarter pound of astragalus, and then I just kind of dump in the rest of the stuff that I want, the cinnamon, the cloves, the ginger to taste. Um, I often use, I know the recipe calls for dry ginger, but I often use fresh ginger, and it just gives it a better taste. So as long as I have that combo of the elderberry and astragalus, I'm normally good to go. And I will fill it up until it just reaches above the elderberries, and not, not much more than that. And then I'll do the same concept. I'll boil it down uh, for 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll go through the process of stringing it and sugaring it up and, and putting the honey in and jarring it up. Now generally, that gives me about, um, about at least a half gallon, but normally it's a gallon that I get from that. So if you have a large family or you're looking for a lot at one time, that's the way to do it. All right, guys, I hope that this video helps you. Elderberry syrup is, is really just a powerhouse herbal remedy that everyone should be making. It's so easy and it keeps for at least three to four months. If you want it to last longer, you can actually add some brandy to it and it'll even up the preserving time immensely after that. Um, there is some question I get a lot, should you make elderberry tinctures that could last years? You could, but again, you run into the cyanide poisoning risk. And the thing about cyanide poisoning is that the cyanide can build up in the cells in your body. So even if you don't have a reaction the day that you take it, you might have a reaction six months later as you're taking it consistently every single day. And once cells die from cyanide poisoning, they don't come back. So my theory is as a responsible herbalist, why not just do it the way I know that's safe so that I don't have to go explaining myself or, or showing a mistake when I knew I could have avoided that mistake in the long run. So, all right guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions below. Most of the questions will be answered in the blog posts that I link in the description. There's a blog post for the recipe. There's a blog post on why you shouldn't make your elderberry syrup in the Instant Pot. And there's a blog post all about why it's important to weigh your herbs when making herbal remedies. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great week and happy homesteading.